Chris Erica Borstrom. She's um, an extension agriculture agent from for Kiwana County in Europe. Next. All right. Well, as Maria Jose said, I'm Erica Bierstrom, and I kind of fell into just learning a little bit more about hooves about six years ago, I guess. And uh, we reached out to Dr. Dobfer on some advice, I guess, to start a project. We were interested in learning a little bit more about how prevalent is digital dermatitis on some of the, the dairies here in Eastern Wisconsin. And pretty much everything I know about hooves is because of Dr. Dorte Dopfer. So I will uh, go ahead and talk to you a little bit today about what we learned and talk a little bit about the foot bath management. And some of this might be repeating what Dr. Dopfer said, but it's not a bad thing to hear things a few times before you remember it. So why do we use foot baths? Most commonly they're used to control digital dermatitis on farms and most commonly used again for controlling digital dermatitis, proper use will make digital dermatitis management more effective. And there is no one size fits all foot bath. There are recommended designs, but every farm is different and everyone needs to manage it as such. Digital dermatitis is something, once a cow has it, she has it for life. It's not something you can cure, you can only manage it. And we use them for disinfecting hooves and preventing digital dermatitis, but not for therapy or treatment. And that uh, is kind of a, maybe some confusion with some farmers as to exactly why they're using that foot bath. And I'll go into that a little bit later and show you some results from a survey we did uh, in 2017 after we did this bigger survey in 2016. And it improves overall health of the hoof. When we have healthier feet, we have healthier cows and the overall general health and well-being of the cow is improved. These are the lesions Dr. Dopfer was talking about when we had went when we went and studied the cows here in eastern Wisconsin, we were looking for three three different kinds of lesions. We were looking for these cows with no lesions as uh, Dorte said, this is a nice healthy hoof here, nice nothing going on in here, nice clean foot too. Uh, here we have our active lesion you can see right here, that's an M2, it's got a little bit of red on there, and these are two M4 lesions. These are lesions that are uh, not necessarily uh, active, but they're, they're also the ones that harbor the disease for future infections in the herd. Foot bath management. Foot baths are not used again to, to treat digital dermatitis, but to keep the infected cows in a state of N M4 non-active lesions. So those are those lesions that are kind of crusted over or healed over. There's nothing red on there. Those, these are not, um, they're not contagious at that point, but if we let them get back to that M2 stage, they're going to be contagious. Uh, M4 cow lesions are severe, or they serve as reservoirs, as I said, for future infections. Uh, foot baths should be offered for a minimum of three times per week. Outbreak should increase to four, if there is an outbreak, you should increase to four or five times a week. And pre-washes help with solution maintenance. I'll show you some photos a little bit later of some pretty dirty solution. And if you're, this is helping with your leg hygiene, if you're rinsing them off or getting those cows through some kind of water, soapy water before they go into your foot bath, it does help maintain the integrity of the foot bath solution and it becomes more effective in the long run and you're not trying to change it as often and it's cleaner, therefore it works better. And I'm going to say this a couple of times, good management does not make up for poor design and good design does not make up for poor management. They need to be done together. This is the ideal foot bath according to the University of Wisconsin School of Veterinary Medicine, 10 to 12 feet long, 24 inches wide. It should have a 10 inch step. It, makes, it requires the cow to make a deliberate effort to step over that 10 inch wall here 
and step into that foot bath. Uh, the slope sides here, that prevents the tightrope walking is what I would kind of call it. I have an interesting story about how I was working with a farmer. I went to his farm. I uh, got scores on his lesions on his entire herd and almost all of his lesions were on the rear left foot. And he was really kind of surprised by that. He knew he had a lot of issues in the rear left foot, but I watched all of his cows walk through the foot bath and every single one of them walked up and they came from the right or came from the left, turned to their left, went into the foot bath. It was only six feet long and each cow went into the foot bath and just walked along the side with her rear left foot without ever once putting her foot into the solution. So this kind of sloped wall, as uh, Dorte said, prevents that from happening. And uh, I think it's a really nice design and it works really well. It's very effective. Make sure again that it's long enough to have two dunks per foot on each cow and maintain that depth at four inches to submerge the dew claw. This is uh, a, I kind of did a, a design. This is a good management. It looks really great. The, the photo itself doesn't show how nice it actually is, but the solution is really nice and clean. Uh, that cow's getting really good submerged in there with her feet. However, she could very easily, if she wanted to, walk along this concrete edge. Another thing I noticed is with those sloped walls, the solution won't splash out like it's definitely doing here in this situation. So some sidewalls would definitely help in this case. Here we have a nice design. There's no way these cows are going to get their feet out of it. Once they're in it, they're in it and they have to go all the way through it. But I thought, well, is this a manure pit or is this a foot bath? This is pretty uh, poor management in regards to managing that solution. This was after milking, so I'm not really sure how many cows went through this foot bath with it looking like this, but I hope they weren't starting the next milking with it looking like this. Good design, bad management. Solution management, uh, again, as Dorte said, change your solution every 150 to 300 cows. We want to maintain that pH between three and a half to five and a half, which is the pH level of our skins. And some people have the mentality that they want to have it very low pH because they're going to burn that problem right away, right out of the cow's hoof. And that's, that's not the effective way to do it. It's just aggravating the situation. Copper sulfate, of course, is our most common solution that we will see in these foot baths. It's nice, looks really nice until we get a bunch of cows through it. Copper sulfate solutions have antibacterial properties to keep the hoof clean. It hardens the claw horn. It is rapidly neutralized by organic matter, though. So that photo two pictures ago of all of that manure and organic matter in there, certainly that is not a very effective foot bath. There are environmental concerns. There's copper is a heavy metal, too much copper in our soil. And uh, especially in the area where I live, where the soil depth isn't necessarily very deep in some places, it's a, a big concern for water. We want to use copper sulfate at a two to 5% concentration. Formalin or formaldehyde and similar effects as copper sulfate. It does kill bacteria, it hardens the claw, and it's inexpensive. It is a known carcinogen, and you must, be, must use that in a well-ventilated area. It may not be as effective below 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and we're in Wisconsin, so pretty much it's below 50 degrees nine to 10 months out of the year, and so that's not necessarily a, a great product to use in this area, certainly not during the winter, and we want to use that at a three to 5% concentration. Other mixes, I always kind of like to talk to different people and what kind of mixes they're using, the commercial mixes, everyone says they have the best mix. So when they have these pre-made mixes, it could be a variety of different products. I've heard of lactic acid being used. It does bring down the pH. Zinc sulfate is another one that some people use. It's not very common. There's not a lot of research on it, but anecdotal results show that it is effective but it doesn't dissolve very well in water like copper sulfate does. pH debate. I just had someone ask me this not that long ago because somebody was promoting to really get that pH down to one to two. 
Again, we, we want to keep that in that three and a half to five and a half or three and a half to five. Skin pH is four to five and a half. And uh, some feel, again, the lower the pH, the better hostile environment it is for the bacteria. So if we get the pH down really low, then the bacteria can't survive. But it's also a hostile environment for skin. So if you think about it a little bit, when we're getting it down into that two to three range, that's like squeezing. If you have, a, for instance, if these cows have an open lesion on their foot from digital dermatitis, Think about it as you having an open cut on your hand and you squeezing a lemon into it. So that's where the lemon is around a two to three percent, or excuse me, two to three pH. And so it's very uncomfortable. It hurts. The cow doesn't want to go through it. So we want to consider when we're thinking about how we're going to manage our cows in their comfort, how much would it affect us if we were doing the same thing to ourselves. Uh, in a 2016 study, we did a prevalence of digital dermatitis in dairy cattle in eastern Wisconsin. We wanted to determine the prevalence of three primary stages of digital dermatitis. This is where Dorte came in. She was very, very helpful. She taught us everything we needed to learn about this particular project and this problem. So again, we were looking for those M0s, the M2s, and the M4s. We wanted to determine the hoof health management practices regarding digital dermatitis in eastern Wisconsin. We scored 11,817 cows, 45 herds. The smallest herd was 22 cows, the largest 6,700. And our average was 607. So the prevalence of the digital dermatitis in the, the group, this is specific to foot bath use. So we asked us several questions on management. We asked how much do you use your foot bath, how often, and then we compared their foot bath use with their actual results of what their prevalence was in that herd. So you can see here people who weren't using foot baths had the lowest percent of no lesions in their herd and pretty similar amount of M4 lesions but significantly higher M2 or active lesions in their herd one to three times per week. There were 16 herds who did that. And you can see there a little bit higher in the M4 or M0s and much less active lesions. And then going to the herds that were using it four to seven times per week, certainly the lowest percent of M2 or active lesions and the highest percent of no lesions. So there is a, a significant correlation between using a foot bath, trimming frequency, and treatment when it comes to the prevalence of digital dermatitis in herds. Moving on, uh, another interesting thing I found out about this uh, survey, we asked the, we did measurements of the foot baths at these herds, and we found out that, again, we do know that that recommendation is 10 to 12 feet. Our average was six to nine, feet, or excuse me, six feet, nine inches. So this is right over here, a three by six by three by six. So it's six feet long, three feet wide, five inches deep. And uh, you can see here, this cow will maybe get one dunk per foot. She's certainly not getting it in a solution that's deep enough. This solution is definitely not deep enough. And if people want to use these kinds of foot baths, these are great, that's no problem, but they need to have two of those. And in this case, this looks to be this cow is coming out of a robot, they could very easily put two of these foot baths end to end, and that would be sig significant enough. The design here in this particular case isn't great because certainly that cow could get her feet on either side of these and avoid putting her feet in. However, if they had two, they would have a much better chance of getting those two dunks per foot per cow. I did a follow-up survey in 2017 following this original survey and I wanted to find out a little bit more about pH. And this is a bit of a busy slide so I apologize for that but uh, I did work with Dorte on this a little bit and just to get some advice on how we could follow up on this. Originally I wanted to get send in the bacteria or the water samples from the foot bath and have her lab evaluate the solution to find out what exactly was in there. 
but we needed to get a little bit more funding. So we just kind of stuck with the basics and we wanted to find out about pH and kind of monitor how long it took for these foot baths to empty themselves out essentially from all the cows going through it. I surveyed 10 herds, average herd size was 2,100 cows. Average milking, they milked three times a day. There was one herd that milked four times a day and one herd that milked twice a day. All of them used copper sulfate as their foot bath solution. They ranged from three times a week to six times a week, Monday through Saturday and skip Sunday. And that was the longest and the other ones were Monday, Friday. Nine of the 10 farms were manual fill and mix. One farm was auto fill, which was pretty nice. So you can certainly manage that pretty well and very closely. We asked the question, why do you use a foot bath? And four of them, I wanted to make sure we just asked them, why do you use a foot bath without giving them any leading questions. And four of them said they use the foot bath to cure digital dermatitis. Um, so we let them use the words they thought they were the reason they were using the foot bath. And so we have four herds that thought that the foot bath actually cured digital dermatitis, which we know it doesn't. And six said they used it to prevent digital dermatitis. Cows through the foot bath before changing solutions, we had a range of 150 cows. So that's our kind of our minimum baseline there for a good clean foot bath to 3,100 cows through a foot bath before changing the solution. Uh, that particular herd, 3,100 cows, was actually using a solution they purchased. It was a pre-mix uh, beyond using the copper sulfate and the company selling them that pre-mix told them you can milk this many times without having to change your solution. We took pH on every 50 cows. So after 50 cows passed through, we took a pH reading and we did that through the entire milking. The pH, fortunately, did not actually vary that much throughout the milking. It didn't vary up or down, but the range we had, the high, excuse me, the low was 1.85. That particular herd added an acidifier. So, yep, they're doing a good job of making it very acidic and the high was 5.34. And again, that's within the acceptable range. So pretty much everyone was in that acceptable range, except for that one herd. And the average was 3.7. So they're doing a good job of keeping that pH in the, the correct range. I do want to also add that these surveys readings were taken during the summer of 2017. Uh, the average depth was 2.75 inches, and this is the depth before changing. So right before they changed it, it was as low as 1.75. So you're really almost not even barely getting the bottom of the foot, and you might not even be getting that lesion to 5.01. So there was quite a bit left in that one's foot bath. Uh, one thing I, Dorte did mention quickly, I wanted to, is the Dairyland Initiative. This is their Life Step Lameness module. It's a pretty nice module. The Dairyland Initiative has a lot of different modules. This is a really nice one where you can go into, you can do your locomotion scoring, digital dermatitis, and there's a lot of different options and modules you can go into to learn a little bit more about your herd and economics of it. And even there's a this one was interesting, talking about the incidence of lesion type. Of course, the older the cow gets, the more likely she's going to have some foot issues. Something to take back to the barn. These are the things that if you're going to remember anything from today, remember this, that foot bath design is critical for effective treatment. Foot bath solution is only as good as its management. So, I mean, uh, we, we saw some good foot baths, we saw some bad foot baths, but it doesn't matter if you're not doing both things. If you're not managing the, the design and you're not managing the solution together, they aren't going to be as effective as a whole. Foot baths are good for preventing digital derma spread, but they're not going to cure it. Remember to keep that pH between three and a half to five and a half percent. Maintain it at normal skin pH level. It'll help maintain healthy skin condition and improve your treatment results. And don't forget your heifers and dry cows. I wanted to mention that in the survey we did do in 2016, we asked herds, what do you do with your heifers? And in this particular side of the state, a lot of people do 
send their heifers out to be custom raised. A lot of them aren't actually doing anything with their heifers on the herd in the on the dairy. They're going somewhere else. So we didn't get a lot of results on heifers, but the herds that did have heifers on the farm were not using a foot bath. And Dorte has a lot of uh, evidence as to where those heifers are starting to find, where they're getting that digital dermatitis. It could happen when they're going off to the, the custom raiser. It could happen in a lot of different places, but once it, it's, it's a tough road for that animal for the rest of their life, they're always going to have to be managed for their digital dermatitis. And don't forget about your dry cows. They're spending three months, two months, excuse me, being dry and that's a long time to not have to look at their feet and make sure they're still feeling pretty good. And when they come in fresh and they've got foot issues, it's all a lot of difficult management after that. So again, good management does not make up for poor design and good design does not make up for poor management. Just a couple of things. If you're looking to get more information, UW-Madison Division of Extension has a dairy program website right here. We do have a Dairy Team Facebook page. We post on there quite a bit. We put a lot of resources on there. So if you're looking for something in particular, take a look there. And this is my page for Kiwani County.